All righty. There we go. Okay, well, why don't we dive in? Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who's joining, depending on where you are joining in the world today. We're so happy that you're here with us and of all the things that you could be doing, you chose to spend your day, your time with us. We're so happy to have you here. We would love for you to let us know in the chat who you are, where you're joining from today. It's going to be an interactive session with lots of participation moments. Um, so we just would love to know who you are, who we have here with us. Um, Gabs, if you wanted to, okay, we've started recording. If you wanna to go to the next slide. We've got some folks who are already introducing themselves. Amazing. Dr. Kahabi, it's so good to have you here. Um, Batula, it's good to have you here. Welcome. We've got Adler. We've got Ida. Good to see you, Ida. Thank you so much for joining us. Bonjour. We've got Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. Benu is here. It's wonderful to see folks joining from so many different places. VT, thank you so much um, for coming. Great. Please keep introducing yourselves in the chat so that we know who all is here and so that everyone else also in the audience can, can know who you are as well. Welcome. Now, just to go to the next slide, I wanted to share a few housekeeping items as we get started. So we will have live interpretation for this session in case you'd like to listen in French. Um, we'll be speaking primarily in English. And so if you would like to listen in French, we have that option. And I'll share the instructions on how to join in the chat. And I will also say them out loud. So please go to the Zoom globe icon at the bottom of your screen. If you can go back one slide, please go to the zoom icon at the bottom of your screen and select to join the French or FR um, language room. And you'll hear everything that we're saying in French um, through the interpretation. And then if you would like to listen in English, just in case we have any moments where participants are speaking and they choose to engage in French. If you'd like to listen in English, please do the same. Click on the globe icon that says interpretation and click English. So in case we do have someone who chooses to participate in French, um, you can hear them in English. Now to the next slide. This is a um, this is an interactive session, but we want to make sure that when the speakers are speaking, everyone can hear them really, really clearly. So please do keep your mic off during the plenary. And also during the plenary, if you could keep your videos off as well, just to be conscious of everyone's bandwidth. We want to make sure that you can see and, and hear the speakers clearly while they're presenting. And then during the discussion, please feel free to engage off of mute, turn your cameras on. It's always nice to see people when we are doing those interactive moments. Next slide. And in case we haven't said this enough, it is an interactive session and we want to make sure that you feel engaged throughout the entirety of today's session. Please put your questions in the chat, put your comments in the chat. We have members of the HCD Exchange team working the chat box today to ensure that all of your questions get answered in real time as we go through. This is also going to help us build out our new FAQs. So you're actually also doing us a really great favor by asking your questions and we're hoping to have them uh, responded to uh, by the HCD Exchange team instantaneously. So these are the sort of Rules of engagement, I'll say, if you want to uh, have a really, really wonderful interactive time where everyone gets the most out of it. And if you are just joining us, we would love to know who you are, where you're coming from. Just going to see. We've got Ahmed. Um, 
from Baoshi Radio. We've got Steve joining from Lerdo Global Health. It's great to have you all here. Boule joining, Maureen, fantastic. Welcome so much to everyone who's joined us. It's great to have you all here. We're so, so grateful that you've chosen to join us today. Now, just to walk you through today's session, because today's event is a little bit different from our usual webinars, and we wanted to start by letting you know what to expect. So today we are relaunching the HCD Exchange project with a whole bunch of new and exciting changes and iterations that you as a community have completely helped to shape and inform through an HCD process that we've taken on ourselves. And so we wanted to start the event by walking through the HCD Exchange history and where we've come from as a project. And then the moment that everyone has been waiting for, the launching of our new value propositions and priorities for this new phase of the HCD Exchange project. We'll have some words of support from JSI under which uh, the HCD Exchange project is housed. And then we'll get some live demonstrations of the new digital platform that we're also launching to support the delivery of the new value proposition. And like we said at the beginning, it's going to be very interactive. There are going to be many moments of discussion and we're looking forward to hearing from all of you over the course of the call. And now to help us with all of this, we have a wonderful group of speakers that I'm pleased to introduce to you all in the order that you'll meet them. So for myself, my name is Liz Royer. I'm the Senior Community Manager for the HCD Exchange team. It's a pleasure to guide you through today's um, agenda. We will also hear from Anne Lafond, who is the director at JSI's Center for Health Information Monitoring and Evaluation, or CHIME. So if you hear that acronym, that's what that stands for. She's also a founding member of the HCD Exchange community and a, uh, an advisor on the project. We'll hear, of course, from Muthoni Washera, who is the HCD Exchange project director. She'll be introducing us to the new value propositions. We'll be hearing from Nicole Castle, who's the senior SBC technical officer within JSI's behavior initiative. Um, and we will also be hearing from Munya Chungua, the senior HCD designer from the HCD Exchange team as well. We're also very lucky to have two guest speakers from the community to help us demonstrate some of the features of our new digital platform. We'll have Isaac Jumba, who is the co-founder at Medeva Labs, and Mero Vashish, who is the SRH design lead at International Rescue Committee's Airbell Impact Lab. So this is who will lead us through today's session. You'll be meeting lots of people, lots of faces. Hopefully it will feel like you know us all by the end. And now we like to think and reflect and be very retrospective to help us think back so that we can plan ahead more clearly. So in true HCD spirit, we wanted to share a bit about our story and history of the project before we share the future with you. So basically looking back in order to look forward. And before we go into any of these, you know, uh, timelines and histories and accomplishments, we wanted to check in with you and see from your side of things, what comes to mind when you think back on the HCD exchange for the past few years? What is something that um, maybe you remember hearing or doing or participating in with the HCD exchange over the past few years. It would be really, really wonderful to hear from you. So I'm going to open a whiteboard, which is something that we're going to be doing a few times throughout the course of this meeting. So we'll just give it a second to load up. And then as it's loading, you could think about what has, comes to mind when you think about the HCD exchange over the past few years, something that you've maybe participated in or seen us share. Um, and we'll just wait for this whiteboard to load and we can start putting in some stickies. Waiting on the technology. <laughs>
I'm just seeing some more folks who've introduced themselves in the chat. It's so wonderful to have you all here. Martha, hello. It's so good to have you here. Marta, also good to have you here. Good to see you. We've got Liz from UNC. Welcome. So happy that you're here today. Paris. Welcome, everyone. All right, this is taking a bit long to load. So maybe we could just use the chat function. And Gabs, if you want to start the screen share again, anything that you remember from the last couple of years of the HCD exchange that maybe stands out, we would love to hear in the chat from you. Learning circles. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, learning circles. Something that we want we launched um back in 2023 to bring people together in roundtable discussions, youth engagement, storytelling, interactivity. Marta, I'm so glad to hear you say interactivity. That is something we definitely hope to be known for. <laughs> awesome webinars. Enthusiasm for sharing experience, the good, the challenging, the failures, for sure. Learning is definitely better when we can learn from failures. Community, SRH and SBCC sessions. Oh, youth engagement, the design sprint. Focus on the co-solution, community, innovation. Focus on local designers and local solutions. Experienced speakers, co-creation, youth engagement, skills building, amazing. Okay, this is really wonderful. It's just like a trip down memory lane to hear, you know, what are the what are the things that stand out in your mind when you think about the HCD exchange? Um, and I honestly believe that it feels more wonderful and 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 validating when it comes from you all. So thank you so much for sharing focus on the process, quality standards framework. <laughs> Thanks everyone so much for sharing this. And now to um, pass it over to Anne, who's going to lead us through our history and some of the things that we really wanted to highlight and share with you to help us um, share the story of the HCD Exchange before we launch into the future of the HCD Exchange. So Anne, over to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Liz, and, and hello to everyone. I'm really delighted to be here. And as Liz said, I've I've um I've been with HCD Exchange from the beginning, and it's been a great honor to be part of this. Uh I know Liz called it a project, but I sometimes feel like it's a movement. And and I think it's great to see that that Maxi uh is here, our first director, who also said, let's have a movement, right? So so I, I feel like our history is a story of of, of a group of people that had uh, a, a passion for experimentation and a commitment to learning and a real curiosity. And I think that experimenting, commitment and curiosity is really what uh, embodies this, this community of practice and what makes it uh, a different community of practice from a lot of others. Um, the whole idea of HCD Exchange started in 2018 when um, a, a group of people gathered in, in Tanzania for a summit, as you can see. And the summit was really to bring together this early stage of experience around integrating human-centered design into adolescent um, health programming. And there had been some large investments in that space. And, and I think there was a, a burning desire for people to come together and to start sharing their experience. And it was really an opportunity to bring this community of public health professionals together with a community of designers and to start thinking about what they could create together. And out of that really dynamic um, activity came this idea that we needed a community. We needed a community of practice to try and help us move forward. So in 2019, this uh, this group that started the the uh, the summit decided to to shape the idea of a community of practice. And in that true sense of human centered design, it was expected to be shaped by the community. And it took a while to think through what it should look like and and how to optimize the potential for the work that had been done and really to drive 
learning in a human-centered way. Um, and the intent was to build the field because it was nascent. It was something new. While, while HCD is, it has principles and values that, that are very, very um, reflective of public health practice, it was, a, it was a, an additional tool in the toolbox that people wanted to learn more about and a way of working that people wanted to really explore. So a grant was made to, to JSI to actually um, develop the community of practice. And, and it started off with a small and mighty team dedicated to the original principles. And it still is a small and mighty team. I mean, it's accomplished a lot with, with a small group of people. Um, the focus in, of the first grant was definitely two big areas. One was build that community and really try and, 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 and optimize the, the community across the globe, right? And then to really think about learning. And what we meant by, by learning was, was not rarefied kind of academic learning, but very much on the ground applied experiential learning. So community and collective learning was the focus. And, and the team in, the, in 2020, built this membership and helped to understand the needs of the community, mapping out a path forward for the community and really became dedicated to this idea of open and transparent and safe sharing to build this body of learning and experience. Um, the idea was always to be people focused and, and to have experience together. Unfortunately, we had a global pandemic and our plans to bring people together physically as well as virtually had to be changed. And so the community of practice became mostly virtual. And I have to say, very good at developing ways of, of interacting uh, virtually in this sense. Um, we convened the community of practice and we defined a learning agenda going forward that would help us um, decide what are the topic areas we should be focus focusing on in the next few years. We um, formed a small think tank of people that were, were helping us develop these, these ideas. And, and we came um, up to the, we came to the decision that we needed um, to focus in on three or four different learning topics. Um, so the four topics that rose to the top were about the integration of, of human-centered design and adolescent sexual reproductive health um, in these four topic areas. One was youth and how HCD helped drive or, or, or facilitate youth engagement. The second was how do we measure and evaluate um, and integrate measurement into human-centered design and ASRH. The third was all around insights. What's an insight? What are we learning? What insights are being gathered? How do people use insights? And the fourth was quality and standards. So those four topic areas really drove us going forward um, into the next years. In 2021, we formalized the research activities we had working groups on these topics, and we partnered with Y Labs and Vihara to, to develop some global goods, some tools, some analyses. Um, we also, also formed a youth leadership hub, which we're very proud of because we wanted to ensure that youth voices continue to be part of shaping this community and that youth actors were able to take the learning from HCD and the tools from HCD into their own practices. Um, we began convening, of course, many different kinds of learning events, learning circles being one of them, different kinds of learning events, and that continued throughout 2021. In 2022, um, we started to launch products from our learning uh, agenda, and these were the, the global goods that were available to the community. We produced the first quality and standards framework for the integration of HCD and human-centered design. And we've um, developed two landscape analyses um, that help guide practitioners and funders and thinkers in this space. Um, the products began to emerge uh, in different formats. And in 2023, they've been, we've been continuing to, to release uh, different kinds of technical briefs and trying to bring this information and this learning back to the community. Um, in 2023, we also started to re reflect on how the world was changing, how HCD and the field had grown around the integration of HCD and health, and really thought we needed to, to sit back and, and rethink what, what should we do next. And that's where the new value proposition for the HCD exchange came from. Um, I want to say that it's been a wonderful um, uh, period of time of growth and learning, and, and we've accomplished quite a few um, uh, things. You can see on the screen here the membership, the different learning events, um, the, the newsletters, all these other resources that have been developed. Uh, a great tribute to this community and to this team, and, and it would be remiss of me not to say thank you. Thank you to 
to the community that has made this part possible, the partnerships that we've had over the years. Uh, many organizations have partnered with us on their own accord, and it wouldn't have been possible to achieve all of this without these these community members and the partnerships. And of course, our funders have been with us by our side all the time. So we continue on in the spirit, the spirit that we started with, with experimentation, commitment, and curiosity. And in our new value proposition, we hope to continue to, to serve the community and to continue to build the field um, as we go forward into 2024 and beyond. So let me now hand over to our current director of the HCD Exchange, my great colleague, Mothoni Washira. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. It always, it's always a pleasure to hear how much this community has done and contributed to. I want to join you and Liz in thanking all of you for being part of our relaunch. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to the new HCD Exchange Value Proposition. You've heard a lot uh, from Anne on how we started and how we had to re-strategize, to rethink about what your needs as a community are. After implementing phase one, it was very clear that although we had made a lot of strides uh, and great strides in building a community and advancing learning at the intersection of human-centered design and adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health, we needed to do more to accelerate awareness creation and to build capacity uh, through institutional partners to practice quality HCD. And all this while building a sustainable business. We therefore embarked, as Anne has said, on a consultative process with uh, the community of practitioners, most of who are here today, and industry experts to understand the evolving landscape beyond AYSRH and to therefore develop a fit for purpose solution that is viable and desirable to our community and ecosystem. In our transition, we are now expanding beyond AYSRH to include public health. We will also be working with a focused uh, primary audience. This audience includes young designers in the global south, experienced HCD and public health practitioners, um, and public health implementers committed to localization and democratization of HCD in public health intervention. We will also target a secondary audience, which will include funders, policymakers, evaluators, and other facilitators of HCD and public health. We are now launching as a knowledge hub that is advancing locally-led human-centered design in public health in Africa and Asia. But we go beyond that because this is knowledge and it's open for everyone to use and learn. Next slide. So before I, I, I share with you our new value proposition, I wanted to recognize this small but mighty team that serves as the core members of the HCD Exchange. Um, they are based in Kenya, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and, they, and, and in the U.S. But even if we're a small team and a very functional small team, we are part of the wider JSI, John Snow Inc. And we have a strong network of experts centrally located in the US and globally through the JSI country offices. Next slide. So we are launching with three, yes, I agree, a very resilient team. We are launching with three services, technical assistance, a career portal, and a knowledge hub. Our technical assistance is a service that aims to provide public health practitioners, including our JSI program, with capacity to integrate HCD into programs or projects and in our ways of working or in organizational ways of working. We believe this creates um, creativity to get into more user-centered solutions. We are also going to launch a new platform, which is the career portal. This is two prongs. It, it aims to accelerate workforce development by fostering quality professional development for local HCD talent, and then matching it to global uh, demand for HCD expertise in public health in Africa and Asia. So we hope to stimulate this uh, demand for HCD and public health to meet the supply that is created 
through professional development. Now, the Knowledge Hub has been here with us and it has been called to the HPD Exchange since it started, and it will continue to innovate to promote learning, connection, and engagement around HPD and public health. We will be able to deliver these three services through three themes. Next slide. Our three themes will focus on localization. I know you've heard a lot about localization, workforce development, and user-centered, user-driven health solutions. We believe that the localization efforts are timely, and we want to contribute to championing these. We will center local talent as the leaders, and we will serve to strengthen local systems while responding to the local communities. We hope that bringing the local expertise to to where the interventions are, support um, responses that are timely and responses that are well designed to capture the needs of the end user. And this will be achieved through the workforce development where we are envisioning a people first um, approach to upskilling workers for long-term success. So we hope that um, by working with experts and working with young people and working with those entering the job market, we are bringing in three different sets of groups to work together, to provide mentorship, to provide coaching, so that we build this practice area in a way that responds to the needs, that the emerging and evolving needs of public health. We also want to continue creating awareness and creating capacity around uh, public health um, professionals, whether it's, com it's um, functional competence or expert competence in design, and we hope to train and promote health solutions that are designed in partnership with the end users, from unpacking their needs to testing their solutions to supporting the implementation of those solutions. This, we believe, uh, will be critical to the HCD exchange in increasing access and use of HCD in global health programming. Next slide. We put together a video to capture the voices of some of the members of the community, speaking about workforce development, uh, user-driven user health solutions, and workforce development in their own understanding. Go ahead. The HCD Exchange started as a back in 2018, where designers, program implementers, researchers, evaluators, and donors came together to share what they had been learning from their respective projects, pioneering the integration of human-centered design into adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health programming. Five years later, and the HCD Exchange has evolved into a knowledge hub where practitioners from across the world come to find resources, connect, exchange, and learn from each other. Through constant collaboration, we've hosted almost 80 virtual events, co-created field-wide resources, partnered with dozens of organizations representing nations across Africa and Asia, working together to advance this field of practice and democratize knowledge. From you, we learned that we needed to expand from HCD and AYSRH to include public health. You told us that design skills are not local and that you needed us to nurture design skills in, global, in the global south. We heard you and are happy to introduce our new value proposition which focuses on three thematic areas, workforce development, localization and user-centered health solutions. We will achieve this through three services, a career portal, which seeks to strengthen design talent and stimulate demand for HCD and public health services. The second one is technical assistance to support organizations to embed HCD into their programs and ways of working. And finally, a knowledge hub to continue innovating and facilitating connections and learning exchanges in HCD and public health. One of the most important shifts that will be needed in the application of design in public health is to ensure that the design work is led by local designers. The value that local designers can bring to this work through understanding the local nuances, actors, and customs and systems, and the ability to connect to program participants and users can provide pivotal connections 
to your target communities, allowing the work to start from a baseline of trust and understanding. Local design can also ensure that the design principles and activities are being adapted to fit the context and needs of the community. And not only is this important at the national level, but also at a hyper-local level where cultural differences are pronounced. The future of design is localized design. As Rasra, we partner with local government, community-based organizations, and league champions to create a user-centric model of delivering adolescent health services to communities. The user-centric approach has helped us create something that has been relevant. It has helped us fail really quickly. It's helped us reset. And at the end of it, provide something to the local government that can be scaled and taken forward. Thank you very much, Belinda. I now have the pleasure of introducing my colleague, Nicole Castle. Um, we work together at JSI. She will walk us through the integration of HCD to JSI's behavior initiative. As we move forward, we're well integrated into JSI to bring more value to the community. Over to you, Nicole. Thanks, Ms. Ali. And wow, that was a really fabulous video and it's been so great to hear about all the achievements that HD Exchange um, has made over the past few years and I'm really excited that I have the chance to speak today um, and to celebrate the launch of the new value proposition. Um, as you, you've all heard, um, the HCD Exchange has always been a part of JSI and has really been critical to the advancement of the application of HCD in our programs both in adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health, but also beyond um, in areas like immunization, nutrition, helping us think of how we can better engage youth across all of our programs, and really in uh, the way we're working in general. And now with this new investment from JSI, um, the HC the exchange will be further integrated into the organization as part of CHIME and the behavior initiative. Um, and for those of you who may not know what the Behavior Initiative is, JSI's Behavior Initiative is the hub for our social and behavior change work, and it facilitates the integration of social and behavioral science into everything we do. And HCD is an important part of social and behavior change, helping us develop a deeper understanding of people, their context, their needs and aspirations, and drivers of behavior. JSI recognizes that HCD is closely intertwined with behavioral science, and it presents an avenue for us to enhance expertise in both fields simultaneously. Um, the HCD exchange will strengthen our program impact and help us ensure that change efforts are really locally led and people-centered. So I'm very excited to be working more closely with my HCD exchange colleagues and to continue the conversation today. So thanks, and I will pass it to Liz. Thank you so much, Nicole. And we are so excited to finally be sharing all of this new work with all of you. And we're grateful for the support that we've received along the way, including that of um, JSI from our colleagues there, from the institutional support. It has really ensured that we have a, a, a long sustainable future. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Nicole, for sharing those words with us and to JSI for the ongoing support. Um, and upon hearing about these new focuses, um, we really hope that all of you are just as excited as we are about this evolution. Please do keep sharing any questions that you might have in the chat because we have our team there to continue to provide responses, answer your questions. Um, and we also now want to take a moment to hear some of your reactions and reflections as we think about shaping the year ahead with the different engagements and activities and areas of focus within um, the work that we do. So if you want to go to the next slide, we have a prompting discussion question. And we would love to hear from you. What are the most pressing topics that really need to be discussed and explored to advance the integration of human-centered design into public health programming and to ensure that we're doing this well. Um, 
I might hold off on kickstarting another whiteboard and just continue to use the chat as people start coming up with some ideas. Um, please share those in the chat. And also, if you are feeling like you'd like to, I would invite anyone who'd like to come off of mute, turn on your camera, and share out any ideas with your voice. So knowing that not everyone uh, might be in a, in a place or environment where you can do so, but if you would like to, I would definitely invite anyone who'd like to share their responses um, in more of a discussion. Um, so what are the most pressing topics that need to be addressed in order to advance the intersection of HCD for public health? I'll give some moments to get some responses flowing in the chat and invite anyone who'd like to share off of mute to please do so. Hi, Liz. Hi, Belinda. Yes. So I think I think one of the topics that needs to, to be discussed is the integration of HCD with other participatory approaches like SBC to especially understand human behavior and how this affects people's health seeking habits. And, and then now after understanding how those behaviors affect health seeking habits, then now that can be translated into understanding um, how to develop people first public health messages that are clear, concise, and contextually grounded on the specific uh, realities that uh, all populations uh, face. Thank you so much, Belinda. Yes, absolutely. This integration um, within the, the SBC world is extremely exciting, extremely relevant, um, and a really, really wonderful complementary um, way of working. I'm seeing also Riley um, uh, also shouting about this in the chat, which is really, really wonderful, really exciting um, that there's so much energy behind this integration as well. I'm seeing some other things coming up in the chat about the importance of adolescent health and especially adolescent sexual reproductive health. Um, a really, really important topic that can definitely further be explored. Speak about inclusion of stakeholders in a project in a project from start to end. Absolutely. How can we ensure that HCD, while it is co-creative, is also inclusive and participatory? And how can that help to um, further create moments of participation and inclusion throughout the project life cycle? I also see John Bosco has a hand up. Please, I'd like to invite you to share your thoughts as well. Please go ahead. John, if you'd like to come off of Hello, mute, please yes. do. Yes, there you go. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, this is John Bosco from Malawi, uh, working on the multisexual nutrition program funded by KFW through uh, UNICEF. I just wanted to concur with the recent speaker on uh, <clears throat> uh, integrating HTC uh, in other, uh, with other approaches. I, for one, at least I uh, am a trained HDC uh, practitioner, and uh, we have just been trained by one of the credible universities here in Malawi, uh, Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences and the Communications Department in a risk communication um, and the community engagement. It's really an interesting field that we need to get the insights and, the, and, and, and apply. It, it really gives a transformation uh, attitude towards either in crisis or in normal situations. Otherwise, uh, from my experience, at least I have realized that uh, we have been designing programs, but we were designing on behalf of the, uh, of the beneficiaries instead of uh, designing them with them. So really HDC uh, behavior insights brought insights uh, that, that, that are very pertinent in terms of ensuring behavior change 
here in Malawi. With the case in question here is the adolescent and the supplementation of iron folic uh, among the adolescents. I think using um, human-centered design, we have ably broken through some of the barriers that were there for the adolescents to get the, uh, the, the, the iron. Thank you very much and over. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think you raised a handful of really, really interesting points there about the complementary nature of these different methodologies and how working with a number of different methodologies together can really strengthen any way of working and any approach to programming. Um, and so we'll definitely continue to explore um, how to integrate different methodologies um, within public health and continue to explore how HCD can really be integrated to be complementary. Um, and I really love that point. And I think lots of people in the chat also um, are saying similar things about ensuring that it is really, really user led. Um, so thank you so much, John. And I see Dinu also has a hand raised. I'd like to pass it to you, please. Welcome. Um, thank you very much. I, yeah, thanks. Thanks. I'm happy that uh, I got to join and you asked this question because this has been a question that I've carried already for a few years now. Um, so a little bit of context, I've joined the HCD exchange mailing list and everything because I got interested in human centered design, uh, I think about six years ago or so, and basically self taught my way through it. But I work at the Knowledge Institute where we offer masters in public health and I work with advisors and consultants all in public health and health system strengthening work and uh, sexual reproductive health work and everything. And one of the pressing topics that I've personally seen and struggled with is how to, well, the colleague earlier from Malawi mentioned it indeed, like how do you um, intersect or integrate these different methods? But on the other hand, what's missing, I find, is that um, there are different languages, right? So um, if you understand HCD, you may easily understand what you need to do to make it user-led, to make it you know, participatory, you, and integrate it also with participatory methods. But if you come from another training where research is a cornerstone, quality, we, we work a lot with qualitative research, mixed methods research, um, quantitative research, of course. So from a very research point of view, like let's say traditional, quote unquote, traditional research, there's still quite some resistance as well as not fluently understanding it. And one reason is the terminology itself, right? In, in HCD, you talk about empathy mapping and all of that, but in qualitative uh, math, uh, research, they'll be like, well, we do that anyway through in-depth interviews or um, you know, through focus group design, uh, focus group discussions and so forth. So I would appreciate and love to see how in, a, um, yeah, what can be done um, to bring these different disciplines uh, together because the impact would be a lot greater as a result of it. I hope I tried to explain myself well, but I, I'm quite passionate about it, so... The passion is very shared and it's also very evident. Thank you so much, Dino. It's really, really wonderful to yeah. meet people like yourself who have this shared passion and excitement around what you would like to explore based on, you know, experience that you're having. Um, and yeah, agreeing with Munya, very well articulated, having some way of like bridging the gap between different fields and different professions that work together, different actors and stakeholders that work together on these programs, starting yeah. even with language. Yeah, um, it's just the so terminology. <laughs> like, so for one of my projects, I'm involved in the World Bank project where we've incorporated um, human-centered design because they want to do service redesign. Um, so it's different languages. And yeah. one of the things I try to do is just have a like an, a one pager terminology, like, you know, <laughs> as if you're translating French to English um, just to help people. So then some people also see it like, yeah, well, you're just calling it a different bottle name, but it's still wine, you know, it's still the same thing or something. Yeah. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Yeah. Over, Thank but... you so much, Dino. Yeah, agreed. And I see a lot of reactions, um, Zoom reactions and things in the chat. Absolutely. 
Um, and I see Batula has a hand up. So we'll go to you, Batula, and then I'll read some things that were coming through in the chat and then we'll shift to the next question for Thank discussion. You. Batula, over to you. Thanks, Sinu. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, it's really nice to, to be part of this conversation. I, I just want to link up with what the last speaker said, Dino. And I think the issue around the semantics, because uh, I think long ago, we the human-centered design approach, we used to have different names. And I think in the development world, we are sometimes called, you know, we are like the fashion industry where we just recycle names and come up with new names. Because when I was young, I used to hear uh, the PRS, the participatory rule or approach, you know, you, where you go down with the community and design something together. And, you know, we used to call it, I think, rule or something appraisal. I have even yeah, forgotten. Uh, yeah. rapid, rapid rural appraisal. Yeah, I have exactly. a development studies background too, so I totally relate. Yes, yes. So, and now we have this, but I think the most important thing for me is and what I had in the chat is that transition. I, I think the most important thing is when we know what we want to get out of the study, is that's the bottom line. I think also process is important. And also it is important for people to understand the semantics because like where I come from with the, from the UN, I, I am a technical advisor with the NFPA. And this approach is not something that is very common. So selling it is, is also making sure that we understand what this means and how do we take it to the next level in terms of acceptability. But my, my other question is, with this human-centered design, when we go to communities, and I think I say this as a researcher, sometimes, yes, they are, they are the same things that people will tell you in a focus group discussion, but they are the unsaid things. Because they say things is, you know, the group is comfortable, they will tell you. But there are certain things that as a researcher, you pick up, either you are part of that community, you know. So I think how do we pick the unsaid thing for me is the, is the key challenge, which is I think sometimes uh, the key barriers in terms of the behavioral changes that we would like to bring up when we are talking about the social norms and which also requires a long-term engagement to understand because I'm coming from a point where we are talking about very deep-rooted cultural practices like FGM. At surface level, people will tell you something, but if you come from that community, you really understand what that really means because I happen to be coming from that background and I know what people tell researchers but I know what they don't tell researchers as well. So I think that element is, for me, is a, a bit of a puzzle. And then the other thing is the measurement bit. Uh, and I think for, when we look at the issue of measurement, yes, it's easy to, to measure the, the numbers, but when it is the social norms thing, and we are talking about a human-centered design approach, and we want to do it over time, the qualitative issues, how those, the measurement of that, I know we can design and we can do it, but I think most of the time, most of the donors would like to see the numbers, unfortunately. And some of the changes that occur cannot be measured by numbers. So that measurement bit, you know, is something also I, I would like to hear as we discuss and the experiences of others. Thank you and over. Thank you so much, Batula. Um, I have I saw also in the chat um, earlier, someone had mentioned the idea of measurement and how do you really capture the value um, of, of things that are maybe outside of the typical metrics that we're used to um, reporting on and how do we really articulate that value back to donors and other stakeholders within the communities as well. I think these are really, really good points that have been made. Um, and just to see some other things that have come up in the chat, just to give those voice, helping non-designers understand what projects look like with and without designing with the user. So again, really trying to articulate that value in, in different ways. Um, 
how cultural contexts and complex power dynamics um, affect the co-design process and affect really all of the processes where we're interacting with the community and how do we overcome those. Um, and um, support from the government to hold uh, accountability on the quality of services to communities. Um, really, really wonderful things coming in. How do we do HCD properly? Um, you know, we spent a lot of time on a quality standards framework to give a, a, a sort of bench line for how to do this well and with quality. So how can we bring some of those principles to life and how do those principles continue to evolve? These are cross-sector collaboration. Oh my days, effective partnerships. <laughs> Um, these are really, really wonderful thoughts. We definitely need to sit and ruminate with these things as we're thinking through the learning activities that we'll have in the year ahead. It's really, really wonderful to get input from you on what is important and what would help you in your practice. So thank you so much for sharing all of these. Um, and I'd like to skip ahead, I think maybe past the second discussion question. Um, I think we could have lots of long discussions. Um, so Gabs, if you wanted to skip two slides ahead, um, and maybe we actually dedicate a whole session to that next discussion question, or even to that first discussion question, to be honest, because we did get quite a lot of really, really helpful thoughts and input there. Um, and thank you so much to everyone for sharing your ideas. Um, now, just to bring it back a little bit to the relaunch, we are marking this relaunch of the HCD Exchange also with the launch of a new digital platform to host a number of different amazing features and functions, really to bring out the value proposition um, and bring these to life and also to give you opportunities to carry on discussions like this um, in asynchronous ways and to, to allow folks to better connect outside of these events. Um, and so you can follow along on the website and I'll share the link in the chat right now for everyone to take a look at the new website. There we go and follow along with us. And we've brought on a few guest speakers to demonstrate some of these key features that we are really excited for you to know about. For this first demo, I am very pleased to pass it over to Isaac, a friend of the HCD Exchange from Medeva Labs. And he's going to walk us through a few of the key features from the career portal. Over to you, Isaac. Uh, thank you, Liz, and uh, good morning, good afternoon to all of you. I'm uh, really excited to be part of this uh, relaunch, and uh, congratulations to the team for the amazing work that's been done. So uh, within just the next few minutes, I would love to have you to experience with me uh, you know, the new website uh, that uh, HD Exchange has developed as part of them uh, communicating one of the areas of their value proposition that they're really keen on. So follow along. I think the link will be shared in the chat just for you to also look at it and also explore during this conversation and also beyond that as well. Good, so I think once you go to the main website, uh, just uh, you'll see first, I think that the design, the look, the feel of it is really amazing. So again, it does communicate the energy, the vibe, uh, the goals, the ambition that the team has. So I think we can already feel that from, from the word go. Uh, so yeah, I think what I wanted us to look at today is just the career portal, which is uh, sort of where we want to see the intersection with CD and you know public health. So within this uh, career portal, we have what you call, uh, just log into that a bit. Okay, cool. So within the career portal, uh, basically the career portal is a place where we want to bring the intersection of talent and public health, so the intersection of that. So within this, uh, the platform offers three main things. So first we have uh, the jobs uh, portal, uh, so the jobs board. So this is sort of actually where uh, you can explore career opportunities and, and jobs and opportunities at the intersection of HCD and public health. Then you also have a uh, submit a job or post a job uh, sort of section. This is where as different players who are part of the wider community can come here and be able to like post different jobs and opportunities that are available. 
And lastly, we have the talent gallery. So ideally, this is where you can be able to explore and connect with different practitioners, uh, both junior, senior, uh, researchers, designers, and across that, and be able to understand who's part of this community and how can you network with them and connect with them to push more impact around the world. So probably I'll just look a bit on the uh, on the jobs board just to see what is happening within that sort of space. Um, yes. So ideally, what we, what you'll be able to find on this platform is uh, basically jobs uh, that have the intersection of HCD and public health. And so you'll be able to see jobs uh, across Africa and Asia, uh, both from you know junior levels to you know more advanced levels. So within this, I think you have the capability to even explore jobs by location. So you can type like Kenya and be able to see what opportunities show up. Uh, so there's uh, you know, an integration and toolkit specialist that's needed by the RC team. Uh, so that's good. And so you can be able to be able to see different types of opportunities that are available, both contract, freelance, part-time, full-time. Uh, you can also explore, um, we can also explore opportunities. And I think this is where you'll be able to find fellowships, consultancies, and anything that just speaks to you. So that's sort of the first uh, part of the platform that you can look at. And then the second part that you can do is as a practitioner or someone working within uh, the platform, you can also be able to post a job. So this is where you can be able to create an account in the platform. And, you know, whether your, your organization is hiring or you're part of a movement, you can be able to put in what job you, like what role you're looking to hire for. So be able to provide the job title, the location that the role will be best, if you want the, the job to be remote or if it's if it's in person, uh, the type of job, so if it's full-time, is it an internship, so allowing you to give you the flexibility that you might need, so that you can be able to get uh, the best, the very best person from the network as well. And then you can choose the category of a job, uh, you know, if it's if it's a designer, if it's an internship and all that, then you're able to describe. So the steps are pretty much straightforward and clear. And then within that, you're able also to show which organization is part of that. And I think the more opportunities we're able to post on the platform, I, I think in the past, we have really struggled to see if you have design opportunities that you want to share, where do you start and things like that. And I think the platform provides a little opportunity for us to be able to bring this all together and be able to explore how this might look like. Uh, yes, and I think once you submit a job, definitely the team on the other side, the data exchange team will be able to review it, uh, ask any further questions they might need around the role. And then voila, when you go back to the jobs board, I think you should be able to see it. And then the last part I wanted us to look at is definitely the, uh, the talent gallery. Uh, so allow me to open that up just in a second. Amazing. So I kind of feel this was the most exciting or the cool out, uh, the coolest part of the platform. I think there's one thing to have jobs, there's another thing to post job, but then there's a, a whole other thing to build community and build relationship and build connections. So ideally, the talent gallery is also where you can be able to find out different profiles of different prof professionals working again at the intersection of HCD and public health. And within these, you're able to see who they are, uh, what type of experience they have, and what's their interest area. And then within that, you're able to explore. So maybe just for an example, uh, I can look at Munya, who's part of the HD Exchange team. Uh, and so within him, we can be able to see his profile. And some of the information we should be able to see is, again, uh, how many people are interested in him, so how many people are following him, how many people is following, a bit of information you know, from you know, uh, what role he plays, so if he's a designer, what is level of experience, uh, a bit of his bio and skills. And then, yeah, once you are keen on that, you can be able to follow, but more importantly, you can also be able to chat and engage with them directly on the platform for you to connect and, you know, just build the connections a bit further and look for ways of collaborating. So this is just a start of something big. And I think for a lot of people who are already on this call today, there's one or two ways you can already start engaging on this platform. Either if you have an opportunity, you can post it there right away, or if you're looking for opportunities, please go ahead and check out what's available. But also more importantly, if we have designers, uh, you know, whether just starting out a bit more experience, please go ahead and create your profile. I think it's a good way to start connecting and building these connections, both online and offline. And I think with that, I will just hand it over back to uh, Munya to continue from there. Thank you so much, Isaac, um, for that walkthrough of the talent of the current photo. 
and all these different elements. So now what I would like to show everyone is the, is the technical assistance page, which is also an, an, an area that we are now providing as HCD Exchange. So just like, um, sorry, just a second, I'm waiting for it to load. Okay, so just like um, Isaac started, uh, the technical assistance page is where you uh, you will find information about the technical assistance that we provide at HCD Exchange. So this is where you find the page, but I will not wait for it to load. Um, so technical assistance basically means that as HCD Exchange, we now provide um, capacity uh, to build teams, but also to provide different services within organizations and institutions that are keen on applying humans into design within their public health programs. So this comes in three services, the capacity in HCD, the HCD research, and also the learning and documentation. Within capacity in HCD, we basically provide orientations, trainings, guidance to support project teams, and also help them to make use of some of the frameworks and tools that we've developed as HCD Exchange, but those that are also um, um, industry applicable tools that um, any organization can make use of. But within that, we also support organizations with developing proposals that have an HCD focus. So this is based on conversations with different uh, people within the community that uh, uh, struggle with um, implementing HCD or talking about implementing HCD within their proposals. So we are going to be providing that service. Then the second service that we have is on conducting informative HCD research to gain a deeper understanding with the people that you're trying to serve. So these could be program participants, but also um, it's applicable to implementing partners as well. So we are able to um, do a formative research, even you make use of other tools and frameworks, as mentioned uh, during the discussion, but still make use of HCD to tr truly understand things such as social norms, cultural beliefs, but also uh, the barriers and enablers to uh, health-seeking behaviors. And then lastly, we are fortunate enough to come from um, experience where we were able to capture and document different projects that were done at the intersection of HCD and AYSRH. So we're broadening that experience to include public health projects. So if you have any sort of uh, project that you would like to uh, document and dis disseminate learnings from, um, HCD Exchange is the place um, that can help you to do that through HCD inspired learning formats. So feel free to reach out to us for any of these technical assistance services that we provide. And I would now like to pass it over to Meru to take us through another section of the website. Over. Thank you. Uh, I will quickly share my screen. Let's see. Sorry, I just have a newer system and I'm trying to share screen. This is why you should always come for Liz's pre-calls. <laughs> okay, um, give me a second. Okay, I think I should be able to share screen now. Um, that's strange. Mara, would you like one of us to try sharing our screens on your behalf and we can just navigate over with your voiceover? We could do that. I wonder why this is not working. 
because you can never anticipate what's going to happen in a, a live event. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that sounds right. Okay, no, wait, I'm able to share screen. I can go back to sharing screen. Oh, you're all right? Yes. Okay, let me pause my screen share then and pass it back to you. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Meru. I'm a human-centered designer based in Nairobi. I work for the International Rescue Committee in our sexual and reproductive health uh, research and innovation portfolio. And I'm really happy to be back on this platform to help launch the new HCD Exchange website, which seems really pretty and exciting. So what I'll be taking you through is something which I've been told is called the Exchange, which I think is great wordplay, uh, which is basically a global forum for people to um, connect, share thoughts, uh, uh, you know, see other members, check out HCD Exchange events, love the way this flips, <laughs> uh, go to their profile and edit it. So let's start with the news feed, if we may. So the news feed here is a lot like just feed in social media. So you have, you know, how you have Facebook, LinkedIn feed. So you have like a news feed wherein people have posted updates. This could be anything that's happened uh, in your design or global health uh, journey, careers, events that you're excited about, any new opportunities, etc. Let me actually just post something so that you all know how to kind of go about this. I'll post something from the IRC. Let's see. Let's add a smiley here. That is cute. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can add a link. So this is just something that we're working on, which is the crowdsourcing platform. So let's get a link to that. And I believe you can just kind of add a link here. Okay. And yeah, and that's how you just post it. It's very much like posting anywhere else. It seems I've posted the link too many times. Oh, no. Oh, it has a little preview as well. Okay. Perfect. And post. And now you can check out this new post I just created on the news feed, um, if you may. And that is how the news feed goes. And you can obviously like look at other people's posts, like comment, like I said, much like social media. The next piece is the members piece. I know this is similar to uh, the one around, uh, you know, talent and designers. But yeah, but we have like a whole page with just members. And I would encourage you to obviously add your profile here. Let's check out some member. Here's my friend Gabs. Been a while. Oh, I can also message Gabs. So you can follow Gabs. You can message him. And you can obviously uh, check out his profile, read a bit about his bio, um, see his expertise, which country he's in, age range, et cetera. So that's a bit about the member's profile. Um, let's go back and see what else the exchange has. Oh, we also have events. So um, I believe this particular event would also be present there. And here it is. This is the featured event. That's the event we are on today. And upcoming events, obviously, encourage you to sign up here. I know so many people here in East Africa who've uh, upskilled using the HCD Exchange masterclasses. So obviously, definitely recommend past event recordings. Oh, here's one that seems exciting. <laughs> but uh, sure, I think uh, you can obviously look at past event recordings, sign up for future ones, and be updated with all the HCD Exchange events. And let's see what else. The, the exchange platform has profile, of course. So this is where you can go and edit your own profile. I have obviously, because I'm like an A plus student, I've already created my profile, else I would have shown you how to do it. But essentially, you add a profile photo, um, you know, things about yourself, like we saw on Gab's profile. And yeah, just what you're looking for, what you can offer, etc. And that's how I think the exchange goes. So if you haven't already, hop onto the exchange, create your own post uh, and uh, get started. Besides this, I also see something interesting uh, called the resource library that I'm happy to take you all through, which again, you go here on the Knowledge Hub and uh, pick on resource library. 
And this has like a bank of resources on both human-centered design and also intersections with global health in general. And what's really cool is that there's this nice filter here. So I was seeing the chat and I saw somebody said, how can we do HCD better? And I was just like, wait a minute, that's familiar. So there's like say quality and standards. So quality and standards of what really good quality HCD looks like. Little promotional moment of promoting our quality and standards framework that you can obviously like read up and know how to do HCD better. But that and various other resources available right here in the resource library. Uh, once you just use any of these filters, different kinds of filters, country-wise, region-wise, publication years, et cetera. Um, so yeah, so that's how the resource library goes. I would obviously encourage you to submit a resource. You will see a link here. So if you've kind of uh, on this page, there's a link here to submit resource, which has a form and you can submit your own resources so that more of us can kind of uh, access your resources and, uh, you know, share insights across the globe. So that's that's the exchange and the resource hub. And with that, I'll pass it back to Liz. And this is a join our community button, of course. If you haven't already, I wonder why you haven't. <laughs> but I would obviously encourage you to join ASAP. Back to you, Liz. Apologies for the screen share, please. This was really, really wonderful, Amara. Thank you so much. Thank you to um, Munya as well and to Isaac for walking us through these demos and bringing light to shedding light, I guess, on the different features and how people can get involved. If you've already signed up and created a username and login, all you'll need to do is come back to the site and put in that information. If you're new to the site, all of the information that you put into the become a member signup form is going to automatically flow into your member profile. And you can also select if you'd like to be a part of that talent gallery as well, if you're looking for opportunities. So that's optional. We are so looking forward to having you all there to really bringing this member directory to light. This is something that we'd never had uh, publicly facing before. And we really believe that this whole platform will give folks the opportunity to really connect and engage and get that sense of community and bring those value propositions to life. So thank you all so much for those walkthroughs and for all of the wonderful feedback and enthusiasm in the chat as well. That's fantastic. <laughs> We're glad you like it and can't wait to see you there on the, the, the platform. I'm going to pass it over now to Munya, who's going to lead us through um, another dis uh, discussion interactive moment. And over to you, Munya. Welcome. Thank you so much, Liz. Um... So pay our experience earlier, we're not going to use whiteboard because it seems to <laughs> not want to cooperate with us today. Um, so I'd like to ask um, the admin to please share your screen so that people can see the question, but I'll speak on the question as we're waiting for the screen share. So how do you see yourself getting involved with the new HCD exchange platform? How do you see yourself getting involved with a new HCD exchange platform. So please make use of the chat box function or you could easily unmute and um, contribute. So how do you see yourself getting involved with a new HCD exchange platform? Great, we've started to see some resource uh, responses already. Um, LinkedIn designers in the career hub with opportunities at JSI. Thank you so much, Anne. So I'll say the question again, but you could read it. How do you see yourself getting involved with a new HCD exchange platform? So the platform that Isaac, Meru, and I just um, showed you guys. How do you see yourself um, engaging with it? Connecting with local designers. Thank you, Brittany. Exploring the talent gallery and definitely using the resource library. Thank you so much. We have over 140 resources available within the resource library, and it features work done in African Asia 
in different contexts, um, in different um, um, part of the population. So it's beyond AYSRH. It's it's in public health. So people that have used HCD in different contexts, and then you could read about how they went about it and the results that they achieved. Um, well, keep an eye on the opportunities page for consulting. Definitely build your portfolio. Um, using the resources and looking for other designers, yes. Um, especially the Italian gallery is where you could connect with other designers and the exchange as well, which um, Mary just talked to us about. Resources and HCD experiences globally, yes. Please add your profile to the Italian gallery. Thank you, Daiva. Please do. <laughs> We would like to see um, where you're from, what's your experience, um, and even the projects that you've worked on. Thank you so much for that. A source for organizations to identify and work with local designers. Thank you so much, Emily. And that's the localization piece that um, Mutoni talked about at the beginning. We really want to uh, push for localization as those people um, that are based in that country have more cultural context um, to the problem being faced by program participants. So definitely um, share RFPs, scholarships. Yes, yes, we, we do share that. So please make use of the opportunities section uh, to find all that. Let me see if there's anyone that has unmuted. Steve, I'm going to email you <laughs> uh, for offering the mentorship uh, services. So yeah, um, within the platform itself, but also offline, we would like to encourage uh, experienced designers to, to mentor uh, junior designers and people interested in the design practice. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your submissions, people. Uh, I do hope you get to experience the platform. Um, and enjoy all the benefits that we have added um, to this new platform. I would like to now pass it over to Mutoni uh, to now wrap us off. Thank you very much, Munya. And uh, just to say, echoing what Meru and Isaac and the rest of my colleagues have said, this is the beginning. We'll continue advancing this work and building it out to a bigger, a much um, uh productive and bigger tool that you can use to respond to all the questions you put in the in the chat and your your um your your vision for this platform now this has been quite a journey for the hcd exchange but we would not have done it without uh the support of our funders uh, the, the the bill and melinda gates foundation and hewlett foundation have been very big supporters of ours, and I know that um, they are represented here. I also want to recognize the support of JSI leadership, center directors at JSI, technical advisors, finance and operations team who worked tirelessly to provide thought leadership on how we could model our business and align and be so, and provide thought leadership on how we can position ourselves within the ecosystem. I also want to recognize InSupply Health. Uh, InSupply Health is an affiliate of JSI in Kenya, and they were so important in this process because they are our team in Kenya, and they often served as our, as our sounding board. That was very critical when we developed this um, value proposition. The HCD Exchange Community. This community of practitioners played a critical role in advising about the ecosystem and in testing the, the product. This product has been tested so many times. It, it stood the test of the HCD process end to end from when we conceptualized it to now when we are starting to implement the solution. We want to thank a special group who we call Friends of HCD, a special way of writing friends and champions of HCD or champions of HCD exchange. They were so critical in providing their input in looking and tearing apart our strategies and really working genuinely and intentionally working with us. 
the HCD and public health industry experts, and we consulted the private sector and they gave input, especially on building a sustainable business. We appreciate that. Rising solution. They were more than our consultant, and I know they are here today. They were our biggest champions and biggest cheerleaders. After one and a half years of consulting and working, um, they can tell you that it was not an easy journey, but they were here to hold our hands and encourage us when, um, as we learn through the process. The HCD Exchange Advisory Committee. These have been our, re they, they've been, they've really, really held our hands. They've connected us. They've helped us think through. I know that some of them are also here. So thank you so much for all the work you put in through strategy, positioning, business development, the Francophone region, all the work that you put in. We thank you. And last but not least, a very, very important team, the HCD Exchange team, the ones, the, the ones we've been calling the small but mighty team. They are blood, sweat, and tears went into this. I want to say that Anne, Lafond, and I appreciate your work. Thank you very much. You put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of positivity into this, and you breathed life into this uh, new value proposition. Thank you very much. Now, our call to action to you is that you sign up. Liz is going to drop the become a member. Please become a member of the HCD Exchange. There is a lot of value we find here. We have over 500 organizations that are part of the HCD Exchange. So you'll be coming to mix and mingle with many experienced professionals. Um, as Meru has said, you can come and connect and exchange resources. You can come and find talent. As uh, Isaac took us through that. Uh, please join our membership. Update your profile, both um, we have a single sign-on uh, and it allows you to sign up once and become a member of the exchange or the career portal. Come and join our masterclass tomorrow. We will continue to do these masterclasses every quarter and we will be guided by you on what you, you deem most important for your learning journey. So tomorrow's masterclass is a case study on end-to-end -end integration of HCD in public health program. Munya and the team at um, Tackle Innovation are more than ready to take you through this. And again, this is implemented through partnership with uh, our members of uh, the community. And they are the biggest cheerleaders, and they come with, with their expertise and support this. So all experienced practitioners, again, we are calling you to, to be part of um, the mentorship and the coaching. We also want you to reach out. We are always open to partnership and we are always open to learning ways we can work with you or we can support you. So please reach out. Um, 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 email was shared on community at hcd.org. Please reach out and we are always very timely with coming back and responding to you. So all the links that you need for all the connections to join the masterclass have all been shared. Thank you, thank you very much. None of this would have been possible without all of you. And thank you for taking your 90 minutes and being part of this process. That is lost, not lost on us. We appreciate it. And now we officially launch the new value proposition and the new website, and we hope that you use it and contribute and continue giving us feedback to improve it. It's for you. Thank you. Back to you, Liz. Thank you so much, Muthoni, um, for those words of thanks. They really do represent um, everything that we've all been thinking as well. We couldn't be here without the work and dedication of so many people, including yourself, Muthoni, as our fearless leader. Um, so thank you so much for all of the direction and guidance and leadership throughout this process. Um, we can't wait to see everyone here interacting, engaging, taking advantage of this platform, of these services. Please reach out. We can't wait to meet you, to connect with you, to connect you with the community. And thank you again for joining us today. 
we are so grateful that you've been here and we can't wait to launch into the future. So we are a couple of minutes early. We will give you back four minutes, as we like to say on our team. Thanks again. We'll hopefully see you tomorrow. We'll see you on the platform and have a really, really wonderful rest of your day, evening, afternoon ahead. And we'll see you again really, really soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all.